With the release of the Bag of the Fox Odyssey back in 1972, the games console was born. Over the decades, dozens of other consoles have come and gone. Some of those have inspired wonder and introduced millions to the wonderful world of gaming. Many have managed to retain a legendary reputation to this day. Hence, why channels like this one even exist. And for those consoles, you know, like the Nintendo Entertainment System, Mega Drive, the PlayStation 1, etc. I can't deny that they fully deserve their legendary status. Some consoles, however, have not been so lucky. There are some which, personally, I don't think deserve their bad reputation. And then there are those that, you know, kinda do. But forget all those, I think I have found the worst console ever made. This. So this beige and brown chunk of plastic is the BBC Bridge Companion, a video games console released all the way back in 1985, despite its rather 70s aesthetic. You know, just put a strip of wood grain across here and beautiful. The BBC had previous experience in this area with the BBC Micro, a successful British computer from the 1980s that became the standard computer in schools throughout the UK at the time. But that computer wasn't actually created by the BBC themselves. It was Acorn Computers that did all the hard work. And for the BBC Bridge Companion, it was Unicard Limited who were brought in to develop the system. You're probably wondering how this thing plays, so let's plug it in and turn it on. So now I'll just grab my controller and we can get started. Um... Oh, that's right, there is no controller, just the buttons on the console itself. And you probably thought the original Xbox Duke controller was unwieldy. Look at that! No! I've never known a console that tells you off for not putting a game in. No, please turn off companion, then plug in cartridge. But at least it's given me, you know, a few kisses here and there in the corners of the screen, so... It's not bad. Consoles from this era would usually just have a blank screen. This one has a right go at you. It's got some serious tood. Just give this some trainers and a pair of eyes and boom! A 90s platform mascot right there. The games for this console come in these rather chunky cartridges that plug in here at the back, kind of reminiscent to the cartridge port on the Commodore 64. So let's shove Bridge Builder in and have a go. Oh god my retinas! As you can see, the graphics are incredibly basic. Not a whole lot going on here. You'd think that for a console about a card game, it would have better looking cards. And why does it all have to be bright yellow? Do you hear those sounds it's making? No? Oh, that's because there is no sound. This is a console released in 1985 that has no sound at all. And it's not that my unit's broken or anything, they just don't have any sound. At all. That's just a problem with the unit. This was released in 1985, the same year that the Nintendo Entertainment System came out, two years after the Famicom in Japan. In fact, the, the Pong consoles released in the 1970s could at least have beeps and boops from an internal speaker. This has nothing. That's just completely inexcusable in my opinion. And yes, I know it's for a card game which doesn't really go beep beep boop beep beep beep, beep, beep much, but you still want some kind of audible feedback from when you use this thing. You know, you push a button and it goes beep just to let you know that, you know, you've actually done something. But no, they thought, nah, people don't, don't like to listen to things. We'll just go straight ahead. No sound whatsoever. So welcome to another exciting episode of Does It Go Beep? The show where we see if things go beep. Binatone TV Master Pong console thing. Does it go beep? Yes, it goes beep. The Game Child Mark II. Does it go beep? Yes, it goes beep. The BBC Bridge Companion. Does it go beep? 
No, it does not. Go beep. So I need to take a break from this thing for a few minutes. So in the meantime, let's see what another YouTuber has to say about the BBC Bridge Companion. So let's go over to the one and only Retro Man Cave. What we have here is something of a curiosity. It's the BBC Bridge Companion console. And Trevor and I here are gonna share with you five facts all about the machine. Fact number one, this would have set you back 199 pounds back in 1985. And to put that in some kind of context, that's 35 pounds shy of the entry level BBC microcomputer on which you could have bought some bridge software and played bridge. I know which I would rather have had. It's about the price of two ZX Spectrums or the price of a Nintendo NES. So take your choice, which you would you prefer, a bridge dedicated console or any of the above? Hmm. Fact number two, nine cartridges were available for the system, including this packing title, Bridge Builder, Advanced Bidding, Advanced Defense, Club Play 1, 2 and 3, Conventions 1, Duplicate 1, Master Play 1 and Grand Theft Bridge. One of these may not be real. Fact number three is third generation. This is considered to be a third generation console, so that puts it in competition with the Nintendo NES, the Sega Master System and the Atari 7800. The main difference being, there's no optional light gun accessory for this. Fact number four. Four. Andrew Cambites is the programmer behind this system. He's a maths teacher turned bridge player on the side to earn some money and of course gain respect from the ladies, primarily his wife Carol, who encouraged him to play bridge to be more social. Not content with just playing bridge, he went on to become a director of the EBU or English Bridge Union and wrote several books on the subject, including Understanding Slam Bidding, which I'm advised is nothing like slam poetry. In short, if you wanted a man to write bridge software for you, Andrew Cambites was the man. And finally, fact number five, what's inside here is really no different to any other computer or games console of the time. It has a Z80 CPU, 2K of RAM, 16K of ROM, and an additional 16K of video memory to make those nice colorful cards appear on the screen. What it doesn't have is any controller ports, so we can't plug in Trevor here. There's no DB9 ports. Everything is controlled using the pad here, which would be nice and familiar to, let's say, a telephone of the time, so as not to scare Doris away from using it. Because the audience, remember, are likely to be a little bit older. That's just the way the bridge audience is, maybe even pensioners uh, and retired folk. So it's designed to be as easy to use and understand as possible, although quite how easy that is compared to an up, down, left, right, and an A and a B button is out for debate. So those are my five BBC Bridge Companion facts. I hope you found them useful, and I hope I haven't burned any bridges along the way. I'm so sorry. Thank you, take care. I've only got three games here, Bridge Builder, which was the packing game, Advanced Bidding, and Club Play 2. Apparently a total of nine were released. All of these games were made to teach the popular card game Bridge. Apparently this game was released in 1989, so it has been supported four years after release, which is quite surprising really. The games were packaged rather nicely, coming in these huge clamshell cases with these spiral bound books. Hmm, written by Andrew Cambite, bridge author and life master. So I googled this guy and it turns out he wants to be reincarnated as a ferret, so make of that what you will. Okay fine, I don't know how to play bridge. So as you can probably tell, I'm not overly thrilled with this bit of kit. So let's have a look at what some people who know how to play bridge thought of it. Well, it seems to get good reviews from journalists, a TV presenter and a pensioner, and also the director for the London School of Bridge. Holy crap! A school for a card game? That's crazy, it's like something at like Yu-Gi-Oh or something. But this was just on the advertising material, so it's probably rather biased. Although I did find one independent review, this time describing it as very basic, almost retro CFAX style graphics. He went on to say that it is a decent tutorial, but is never going to explain even the basic subtleties of the game. 
and that you would get much more, much more cheaply from a book. And that brings us on to the price. If this was a budget system, then it can maybe be excused for some of its flaws, although the lack of sound is completely inexcusable. This thing sold for £199.99, pence, which adjusted for inflation is nearly £600 in today's money. £600! And all it can do is play bright yellow Silent Bridge. And this only includes one cartridge. If you want any more, you're going to have to pay extra for those additional cartridges. And they all just play bright yellow Silent Bridge. 1985, you could get a Commodore 64 for £200. And if you really wanted to learn or play bridge on a computer, there were bridge programs released for those computers. Like Bridge Master with Terence Rees, which was released in 1983. And it looks very similar to the Bridge Companion with that bright yellow cornea bothering aesthetic. If you were dead set on getting some kind of electronic bridge machine that can't play anything else, then you could just get something like this. This is a Steamer Bridge Computer 2. And look, it has loads of buttons on it. Look at all those. Hmm. Wonder what this one does. Cool. So this console had outdated graphics when it was released back in 1985. It has no sound whatsoever. It could only play bridge and people that could play bridge said it couldn't even play bridge very well. And all that is topped off by a colossal price tag. So I think this makes it a very good contender for the title of worst console of all time. And if for some reason you do want to pick one of these up yourself, they are quite rare nowadays, but they're not particularly expensive. I got mine for £5 and nobody else even bidded on it. Nobody wanted it in 1985 and I guess nobody wants it today. So that's all for this episode of the Tomorrow Cade. So thank you very much for watching. So please share, like, subscribe, hit the bell icon and all the usual stuff. And follow me on Facebook and Twitter and all that. And yeah, so until next time, bye!